If you trade the stock market, if you invest in stocks, there's a very simple concept that you have to understand because almost every hot stock will give this signal early in its upward trend. And this week I'm going to show you what that is. And then I'll give you a few examples from the past week where it was quite effective. Plus I will do my normal market analysis. We'll look at how the Fed moved the market this past week. And then finally, we're going to look at some trades in what was the hottest sector this past week, the cannabis sector, a couple of uh, applications of that early rule that I'll show you at the end of the video. It's all coming up in this week's Stock Scores Market Minutes. All right, so if we're stock traders, we're investors, we have a simple aim. We want to beat the stock market. We want to do better than what the market does. If that's not our aim, if we just want to do what the market does, well, then you just go out and buy an index ETF or mutual fund and you earn your eight to 10% on average per year. It's pretty good. It's better than most investments out there. However, if you're trying to find those hot stocks, the ones that make the big moves in a relatively short amount of time, then there's a simple concept you need to understand. And it revolves around two things. One, human psychology and emotion. And the second is fundamental information moving a stock. When a group of investors has some information that warrants paying more for a stock, let's say there's a positive development in that company's product or in their earnings or perhaps in the sector, then what will happen is the people that know the most about that company, the people that tend to get the new information first, they'll go in the market and trade that stock aggressively. They'll buy it aggressively. It could be an institutional investor. It could be a, a chat room on the internet with a whole bunch of members who all jump into a stock at the same time. But when they do that, they create abnormal price and volume activity in the stock. And the core concept of the stock scores approach and what I've been doing for 30 years is to always first look for that abnormal activity. In fact, I've built some indicators to do that. I'll show you those in just a moment. So with those indicators, I can use computers to look through the entire market and identify stocks that are behaving abnormally, that are making abnormal price moves with abnormal volume. Now it's not enough to do that because while almost all market beating trends start with abnormal activity, not all abnormal activity leads to market beating trends. So when I show you some examples in a minute, I'm going to highlight not only the abnormal activity and what it looks like, but also what uh, separates a good signal from a marginal one or from a bad one. All right. So as traders, we're always thinking about following the stocks that are hot, that have started to behave abnormally. And we want to look for those stocks and sectors that surprise the market with abnormal price gain and abnormal volume. And then we can use basic chart analysis to identify whether it's a good opportunity or not. So let's jump to the charts now. I've got a couple of examples. One is a daily chart of a stock that has done really well over the past couple of months. This is OCGN. And the first thing I want you to notice are these bars on the chart. This is a candlestick chart. But notice there's a few of them that have this little pink dot with a yellow dot in the middle. All right, there's a number of them on the right side here. These are what I call an action candle. So it's a stock scores indicator. It's using the stock scores volume test, which is an indicator that I developed, which looks for abnormal price volume or abnormal volume activity. And then the stock scores price test looks for abnormal price action. So when you get both of these lines spiking up over this blue line, it means essentially that the price movement or the volume traded is abnormal and statistically significant. And when you have both of those things together, I call that an action candle. It basically means there's action in the market that deserves attention. Abnormal price gain, abnormal volume. Now then what we have to do is look for those candles, those abnormal candles, where it is surprising the market. So in other words, the stock is boring and then there's surprise. It's boring and then there's surprise. So those two candles 
told me that that stock was likely to perform abnormally. Now, I'm not really interested in them when they've already, you know, when price gain has already moved a lot. So action candles only matter when they're breaking from low volatility, when they're surprising the market. Now, I'm going to do some webinars in April where I'll dive deeper into this. I'll tell you in a moment how to register for those. They're free, but it's like more like an hour long rather than these shorter YouTube videos. And so we'll touch on that in just a moment. But let's look at another example first. Here is another stock that had these action candles. And you can see there was a number of them uh, today when I'm doing this video, which is on Friday. And that happened on this stock on a shorter term interval. The last chart was the daily chart. This is a 13 minute chart. So this is 13 minutes of abnormal price gain with abnormal volume. But what's important is the stock was boring, quiet, sideways, and then it broke out from that with the abnormal price, abnormal volume, the action candle. And that then sent the stock into a very sharp upward move. In, the, in just the day, it went from around $1.50 to four dollars in you know a couple of hours and on that daily chart which you looked at before you know we've got a price move that goes from 40 cents to a dollar over a dollar 60 in two months and so depending on whether you're a position trader or a swing trader we can use these for day trading you know if you watch my videos regularly you'll know that i use this indicator a lot for day trading as well so the simple concept is looking for these abnormal breaks from low volatility you don't have to have my indicators. You can look through charts, but certainly having access to stock scores and having access to my indicators, which is something available to members of stock scores, then you can find them simpler. But if you just look at a chart, it's pretty obvious. Stock, nobody cares about it here. And then boom, it comes alive. Nobody cares about it and it comes alive. And then it follows through with upside gains as the wider market learns about what is exciting. So let's just jump into the Stock Scores website now. And if you want to register for those webinars that are coming up in April, just go to stockscores.com, scroll down the page. There they are there. I'm doing one on day trading, one on investing, one on my indicators, and just general uh, simple strategies for finding hot stocks. So we'll talk about more about those in April. And you just click on more info and you can register right on the page there. All right, let's get into this week's market analysis we'll jump back on the stock scores website and pull up the s p 500. obviously still in a strong upward trend it was looking a little sketchy coming into this week perhaps some weakness because of uh you know the fed announcement this week maybe some people concerned about that but the fed announcement got a good reaction you can see here the uh, sharp move up this is the fed announcement moment right there at two o'clock on wednesday and we had uh, some gains from that and it's still in an upward trend. So we're in a bullish market in the short term and the long term also remains in a bullish market. To me, it's risky, but there's no break of the upward trend. And as long as there is no break of the upward trend, don't let your emotions get the better of you. Just stick with the trend and let it run. Eventually the trend will break and I will let you know about it here in the uh, weekly video. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because then you will always know when I've uploaded my latest video. Here's the NASDAQ 100 daily chart, still in an upward trend. Uh, intraday chart, a little choppy, which means there's some uncertainty in the tech space. And certainly we've seen some profit taking starting in some of those high flying large cap tech stocks, but the long-term trend is still up. Onto the small cap market, which has not enjoyed the same sort of gains as the large caps, but they did do well this week. They are generally trending up, but not sharply so. I think this is the area of the market that's going to get the next dose of capital as maybe it moves out of some of those large cap stocks and into the, some of the smaller caps. Um, basically, if interest rates start to drop, and we'll talk about the bond market in a minute, uh, we should see this market start to move higher. So in the short term, it's slightly upward, maybe a little neutral in the last couple of weeks. And then a the long term has made this breakout and does look more likely to go higher than lower. On the Toronto Stock Exchange, the Canadian market, good upward trend in place, being driven largely by commodity stocks. We're seeing strength in mining, gold, precious metals, and also improvement in the oil market. And that's allowed the Toronto Stock Exchange to get back to its old highs. Now, it has rallied into resistance from the highs of basically two years ago. 
And I do think there's a good chance we'll see a little bit of a pause here. That tends to be what happens when market rallies into resistance, but it still looks relatively healthy. And so if you're long of stocks in the Canadian market, things are improving. Let's take a look at the commodities themselves. Here's the gold chart. You can see those good gains for gold. And in the longer term time frame, we are in an upward trend. I think you got to be picky about what you trade, be more of a swing trader on the gold market and the precious metals market because there is quite a lot of volatility. Looking at the oil market, you can see we're trending upward as well after you know a pretty dismal second half of 2023. This market is improving. I think a lot of these energy stocks are still quite overlooked and there's probably some potential to look for opportunities. A lot of these, uh, particularly Canadian uh, smaller oil companies have really strong yields and now their charts are starting to improve. So you've got the potential for capital appreciation, but also uh, earning some return on the yield. Let's take a look at the uh, commodity or sorry, the currency market. Here is Bitcoin, which went parabolic. So anytime a chart goes parabolic, it's often at a top. And we can see that that parabolic trend has been broken. And that means we're likely to pull back to the linear trend line. So that's your downside until you hit support at the linear trend line. Doesn't mean that the party's over, but it could mean that we simply go into a sideways range for a little while. Of course, if we make a falling top and then break that linear upward trend line, then you wanna get fairly defensive. I do think taking some short-term profits on Bitcoin is a wise move, simply because it's had such a good move. And when things go parabolic like that, and then make what I call a bursting bubble candle, which was two weeks ago, they usually pull back a bit. And I think that's probably a reasonable expectation for the next little while. Now on to the US dollar. And uh, in the last month or in the last two weeks, we've seen a little bit of a gain happening in the US dollar, which is good. And again, the market's speculating that there will be um, a drop in interest rates. So the fact that the US dollar is going up is a bit odd because usually the US dollar moves counter to interest rates with interest rates expected to fall. I think I said going up in a second, a second ago, I meant fall. With that expectation, really the US dollar shouldn't be rising like it is. It is, however, and so an interesting sort of conundrum in that market. Looking at the three-year chart, we are slowly building some rising bottoms. Let's take a look finally at the bond market, which is such a critical chart for those small cap stocks in particular. And it is still in a downward trend, falling tops. And so before we get too excited about the bond market, we need to see this downward trend line broken from a rising bottom. We haven't seen that yet. Um, we did get a break of the downward trend line over here from a rising bottom, and that led to this nice move up. And if we look at the weekly chart, we can see there is the potential for a break of this downward trend from a rising bottom. We just need to get up through that downward trend line. So a move up into the $97 mark on the TLT would be a good move and, and really help those small cap stocks do better. So my ratings then, uh, bullish on all of, the, all of the stock markets except for the small cap market in the short term, I've got that at neutral. It's just not quite gathering the momentum yet. Gold bullish on both time frames. Oil, short term bullish, long term neutral. Same for the US dollar. And then Bitcoin, I've lowered my rating to neutral from bullish. It's been bullish for a long time. And so that's a little bit of a concern about some profit taking there. And then I've got a neutral rating on the bond market. All right, so at the top of the video, we talked about abnormal activity telling us that something's going on. And that happened in the cannabis space a couple of times this week. On Monday, we've got the first sort of show of abnormal activity in the cannabis stocks. And so I, if you read my weekly newsletter, which is free, you can get that for free at stockscores.com. On Monday, I said CGC is a stock to keep an eye on because it started behaving abnormally. Well, let's take a look at that chart. This is the 13-minute um, chart going back for the week. And you can see the abnormal activity started there on Monday morning. Look at the volume higher than normal. And it was boring and dead. And then it came alive. So that's why I wrote about it in the newsletter on on uh, Friday, or sorry, Monday. And again, that's a free thing. It's available at stockscores.com. You'll be able to find it, just search around on the website a bit. But that's a move from 350 to where we're now at $8. Now, if you missed that initial move, there was another opportunity on Friday 
in the same sort of way, you had this ascending triangle pattern, which is a predictive pattern, and then you had an action candle break from low volatility, from optimism, through resistance, and that meant for a good move just in the single day on Friday, going from, I don't know, around 410, 415, to where it closed at 484. I don't know anything about the cannabis stocks. I don't really know anything about any stocks. All I know is the people that know the most act in the market when there's some new information that is good and they buy aggressively. And I just use these computers behind me to find that abnormal activity. You can learn more about that in those webinars that are coming up uh, in April, next week, two weeks. They're free, join in and I'll spend about an hour going a little deeper into some of those concepts. Hope you've enjoyed this week's video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Where do you think the small cap stocks are going? Do you think that uh, they're going to play catch up to the large caps or are the large caps going to continue to rule the market? Hope you've enjoyed it and trade well.